Recently, we participated in a stockmanship and stewardship program at Colorado State University, and Dr. Temple Grandin was one of the speakers, in fact, the keynote speaker. Uh, Dr. Grandin, you've been a pioneer in this area from the very beginning. Uh, what kind of progress have you seen over your career in terms of stockmanship? Oh, 100 million percent improvement in handling of cattle. When I started in the 70s, cattle handling was really terrible. And today, people are getting much more interested in stockmanship. The amount of people who are good at handling cattle, that has greatly, greatly increased. Uh, one of my former students, Ruth Woolly Woody, did a survey of uh, large feed yards using the NCBA uh, objective scoring system, got very, very good results. Uh, falling down was way under 1% of the cattle. That's absolutely Great. And Kansas State did a similar study with similar um, results. Stockmanship has improved. Now, I want to emphasize, I think it's important to do some numerical scoring of handling because what that does is prevents people from slipping back into old ways of doing things. Okay, they may have gone to a workshop, oh man, gung-ho, we're going to do uh, stockmanship right, and then without realizing it, the prods come out a bit more, the yelling and screaming comes out a bit more. But if you measure handling, then you go, well, my vocalization score on the squeeze chute's gone up. I need to do something to reduce that. You know, you have um, been instrumental in redesigning so many facilities across this country. What guidance do you give producers who are thinking about redesigning their facilities in terms of what they should keep in mind? Well, you want to lay things out correctly. I have found that selling somebody the thing, okay, we're going to buy the fancy new facility, people will do that a lot more easily than doing the management. And when I first started, a mistake that I made back in the 70s is I thought I could build the magic thing that would solve management problems. No, it doesn't. You have to have the good stockmanship to go along with the facility. You don't necessarily have to have the fanciest facility, but you've got to have non-slip flooring, and they have to be laid out correctly. You know, there's been discussion about tub type of facilities I design or bud box facilities. Both have to be laid out correctly to be the most effective. And it's not just the facilities and the people. You talked during your keynote about the cattle themselves and how important docility is. Yes. Um, we did some of the very first research 20 years ago on uh, on the temperament scoring. And cattle today are calmer. They get less scared because we have been doing 20 years of temperament selection. And on that first study that we did, we found that a calm cattle gained more weight. That's been replicated a whole bunch of times. So a lot of the cattle we have today are more docile. What would you like to see as you look ahead over the next 10 or 15 years in terms of the future of stockmanship? Well, I think stockmanship is going to continue to get better. I want to make sure that we don't get into some breeding and genetic issues. Um, 30 years ago, I noticed very bad leg conformation problems in pigs that caused lameness. There's been some of those issues in cattle. You've got to breed cattle with good feet and legs, and there are scoring charts available for that. Dr. Grandin, thank you so much for your perspective, and thank you for all the leadership you've provided throughout your career in helping us all understand just how important stockmanship is. No, stockmanship's really, really important. I want to commend uh, NCBA for doing all these stockmanship workshops. And this year, there will be many more opportunities to participate in these regional stockmanship and stewardship uh, meetings, and so I hope you'll put those on your calendar. We'll be back with more right after this.